Hello, everyone. My name is Eduardo Mancini, and thanks for coming to my RN Pharma on Demand talk today. Before we start with the talk, a little bit about me. I'm a data scientist working at Roche in the UK, but also as part of my day job, I'm the business lead for the open source R collaboration that is the Admiral package. So pretty much every day I juggle two paradigms, namely those of my internal work at Roche and my open source Admiral work. And in today's talk, I'd like to mirror that duality by showcasing the Admiral package and how we have adapted it at Roche um, for our specific Admiral needs. I'll start by giving some background about the Admiral packages so that we're all on the same page. I'll also transition to covering why the Admiral package is not just one package, but actually a whole family and what each member of the family brings to the table. Finally, I will conclude by showcasing an industry example in action. So pretty much every company doing a pharmaceutical filing these days will need to create Adam data sets along the way. And so far across the world, we've had a, a huge amount of teams developing their own functionality to achieve this goal. We in the Admiral team believe that the right thing to do is to break down these silos, instead revolutionizing Adam creation across the industry by bringing companies together instead of keeping them apart to develop one harmonized solution. And so having said all this, we now come to the Admiral vision, which is to provide an open source modularized toolbox that enables pharmaceutical programming um, community to develop Adam datasets in R. So Admiral started as a collaboration between Roche and GSK, but along the way, we quickly progressed to over 20 companies testing different facets of it. Um, and now today we have seven companies co-developing the package. However, the journey hasn't always been smooth. From the moment we first presented the idea to a group of programming heads from various companies to today and most days in between, we still get the objection that Adam standards by nature are open to different implementations. And so how will every, any company ever be able to use a single code base? The very time we heard, the very first time we heard this, the recent criteria from oncology solid tumor endpoints were quoted as an example of such an unattainable challenge. Instead, later on in my talk, I'll cover how several, several years on in the Admiral journey, we have implemented the research criteria into the Admiral family and made this available to the whole industry. Before I do so, however, let me briefly set the scene for the family of packages that I refer to under the umbrella term of Admiral. I'll start by noting that ever since we started to design and consider the Admiral journey, we were cognizant of the fact that we would not be able to provide a tool that by itself would cover any and every possible Adam need. As such, from the start, we set a, we set a clear scope. Adam is endless, so let's never try to cover every eventuality or our packages will become bloated and our functions will become overly complex and unusable. Instead, we will focus more on the 80-20 rule. Our open source offering offerings cover a core Admiral package, which supports safety and common derivations. And this itself is extended by a growing ecosystem of package extensions focused on therapeutic area endpoints and specific needs. Think of these as a family of modular building block functions, including templates and user guides with a consistent look and feel for users. These raw materials should help you get 80% of the way along to creating um, an Adam data set while still allowing for company or individual user flexibility. And this is where the final company level piece comes in when thinking about Admiral implementation. In our case, this was creating the closed source Admiral Roche package, which essentially allows us to pull together the Admiral packages along with other useful Pharmaverse packages such as MetaCore, MetaTools and Exporter to help us link in our metadata and build XPT files for electronic submission. We here have the option to make company level choices to match our internal Adam implementation standards. In the building block analogy, you could think of these as instruction booklets. So Roche may be building the Taj Mahal here, whereas another company may be building the house from home alone. Nonetheless, the foundations come from the same reusable blocks. So now let's look again at the original rhesus challenge. For anyone unfamiliar with oncology clinical trials, one of the most common primary endpoints is progression-free survival, which means time until a patient either dies or their disease progresses. 
that is um, a tumor growth or the cancer spreads. First, we'll have a look at some of the example building blocks offered to us from Admiral. Here we have a function, derive param TTE, that enables um, derivation of time to event parameters in a basic data structure Adam form. Then on the right hand side, we can see on the, a vignette on the Admiral documentation website detailing how such an Adam could be built step by step using this function and other functions, with examples showing where this might be done in areas relevant to all studies, such as um, an, a safety setting. Now let's look at what the Oncology Therapeutic Area Package Extension offers us on top of Admiral. So this is called Admiral Onco. Firstly, there are functions and a vignette specifically around how to create the response parameters, offering these for um, research criteria, but also the option to build up for further response criteria outside of solid tumor. These are built in a way to allow companies to make different choices around how exactly they want to implement these endpoints. An example might be one company wanting to store derivation as an ADSL variable, whereas another might choose to instead implement it as an ADRS parameter. Alternatively, endpoints where the research criteria are open to interpretation flexibility um, have also been built into the arguments of the Admiral Onco functions. For example, how many non-evaluable records are allowed between two responses to still allow for a confirmed response. Building on this, we also have another time to event vignette, but this time targeted around common oncology endpoints. There you can see examples of reusing the same admiral function, still derived param TTE, um, as the last slide, but now focused on how to derive progression-free survival, which is specific to the oncology therapeutic area. Now the final piece of this puzzle is the company implementation. So as Ro at Roche, as part of our Admiral Roche package, we provide template scripts that use the open source packages and functions. But now these are aligned to our company specific Adam standard implementation choices. We only ever add Roche specifics at this level. So anything that could be relevant for others, we promote up to the open source packages instead of keeping it closed source within Admiral Roche. And this is, essentially the open source spirit summarized. In an ideal world, it's true that we would, we'd never even need this piece of the puzzle at all. But after all, as we've heard many times before, every company implements Adam differently and you'll never harmonize this across the industry. Maybe one day something like Admiral could help bring the industry one step closer to true harmonization, but we'll have to wait and see uh, to see if that happens. So I hope you enjoyed coming along the Admiral ride with me, all the way from open source to company, company implementation. To finish off, we'd like to share that we at Roche have our first filings using the Admiral and Pharmaverse packages um, from next year, 2024. And we're wondering whether your company will be joining us on this journey towards maximizing open source for clinical reporting. If so, uh, do speak up because we'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening. And thank you for coming to my on-demand talk.